You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So if there's one thing, if there's one thing I think Joe Biden should never, ever be able to escape from was his disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. This guy will not even mention the names of the 13 soldiers that he got killed. And when those soldiers were being brought off the plane in those flag draped caskets, he checked his watch every single time. There is no comparison to Joe Biden and Donald Trump. There's none. Joe Biden is a thousand times worse than Donald Trump ever could be. You're talking about a man that has been in politics for 50 years and he just is so hubris. If it's not hubrism, then it's arrogance. If it's not arrogance, then it's just then, then he's just a flat out sociopath. This man has no regards to anybody or anything but himself and his money. And it, like I said, if there's one thing that he should never be able to escape from in the 2024 election is the Afghanistan withdrawal. And it's not just me who says it was a disaster. Now there's a general who oversaw the Afghanistan withdrawal, and he calls Biden's strategy a serious mistake. So I got an article here from John Solomon over there at Just the News. The U.S. general who oversaw the bungled withdrawal from Afghanistan says he believes the Biden strategy was a, quote, fatal flaw that will have historical consequences. I have a lot of regrets about how it ended in Afghanistan. I have a regret with the basic decision, which I think was the wrong decision. Retired Marine Corporal General Frank McKenzie told Fox News in an interview that aired Saturday. And I particularly regret that we did not choose to begin to evacuate our people, our embassy personnel, our American citizens, and our at-risk Afghans at the time we made the decision to bring, to bring in our combat forces. I think this was a serious mistake, and I think that led to the events of August 2021 directly. The former head of U.S. Central Command said such mistakes will have lasting consequences. I believe history is going to view the decision to come out of Afghanistan in the way that we did and the manner that we were directed to come out as a fatal flaw. While blunt and regretful, McKenzie strongly disputed a Marine sniper allegation that the U.S. officials had the description of a suicide bomber but refused to allow him to be shot before he detonated a bomb, killing 13 troops and wounding scores of others. We are dealing with the possibility of a suicide vest attack, but without specific description of the person. Man, I said when this happened, I got on Twitter at the time, I got on Facebook, and everybody was trying to make excuses for Joe Biden. Everybody was trying to say it was Donald Trump's plan. Everyone was trying to deny the fact that it was a disaster. And even to this day, they won't, even the Democrats won't talk about it. But yet they'll talk about Donald Trump's response to COVID. If there is one thing that Joe Biden should lose votes for in the 2024 election, it was that Afghanistan withdrawal. Because he was told by all his advisors, he was told by his generals, he was told by his military advisors, it was a bad idea. Joe Biden changed the date of the withdrawal just so it would look good for a September 11th anniversary. It is disgusting. It is disgraceful. And the mere fact that Joe Biden won't even mention the 13 troops' names. I don't know if he said them one time. Maybe once. But this, the, the reason why he's trying to evade saying the troops' names, but the reason why he doesn't want to admit fault to the Afghanistan withdrawal is because he knows it's a political disaster for him. And so this guy will disgrace any family will disgrace any soldier in the name of keeping power. I'm so sick. I am so sick of the tribalism and these people trying to defend Joe Biden and his disastrous administration, all because they want blue team to win. Look at the damage these people have caused our country because of their sick tribalism. I'm not defending Republicans. Republicans do the same thing too. But the thing is, is Republicans aren't trying to destroy this country. There's only one side trying to progress this country into oblivion. 
And so, like I said, in 2024, everybody, every single person needs to remember the Afghanistan withdrawal of Joe Biden, where you had freaking people falling off a plane. These people made that Joe Biden made every wrong mistake you could. And it's no surprise because Joe Biden has made the wrong decision in every major foreign policy his entire career. This was a statement said by Robert Gates. Even Robert Gates, an Obama official, said that Joe Biden has been wrong on every single foreign policy and he was too old to run for president. And people voted for him anyways. This is why we get people like John Fetterman. This is why we, we get people like Joe Biden. It's because these people's tribalism, vote blue no matter who, is reckless. It is irresponsible. I just want Democrats to just start admitting it. Voting for Joe Biden was a mistake. And it's time we move on. And if that means Donald Trump, then that means Donald Trump. But whatever is going to make this country better, that's what the American people deserve. It's like people aren't voting for what's best for the country. They're voting for what's best for their team. And this is why we have the situation we have. You have a country that is in major decline. You have what appears to be a collapse of our, of our entire civilization here in the United States. And so I think it's important that people remember the d- disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. I played you the audio for, from the soldiers. I played the, the audio from the, one of the soldiers that Joe Biden came in to greet. And he, he shook his finger and he kneeled over me and he said, what do you want? Like these people are disgusting. Joe Biden is not a good man. The Bidens are not a good family. They're just not. I'm sorry. I know people probably thought that about the Biden family, but they're not. You were wrong. Just admit it. You were wrong. And so here's another weakness of Joe Biden that nobody should forget. Joe Biden has been a liar and a plagiarist his entire career. I got another article here. Hat tip to Ben Wadon. Copycat Joe. Biden accused of new plagiarism by ex-Harvard Journal editor. President Joe Biden has long sparked controversy with instances of plagiarism, but one former editor of Harvard Journal and legislation has recently come forward with details of a particular infraction that he says shows consciousness of guilt. The president has previously admitted to prior plagiarism instances, including one in which he plagiarized an article from a law review while attending school, per the New York Times. Earlier this week, the Heritage Foundation Vice President Roger Severno outlined his alleged experience in 2000 when he edited a Biden-penned article on civil rights and was shocked by the plagiarism he found. Quote, site-checking involves formatting case citations under highly prescribed rules and searching Westlaw to make sure the cases haven't been overruled or superseded. Because I was interested in the article's topic, I read a bunch of cited cases all the way through, he posted. He had lifted language straight out of the SCOTUS opinion changed a couple of words, and called them his own. There were no quote marks and no footnote or anything else attributed the court as the source, Severno continued. I then read the piece through again, and multiple other phrases sounded familiar. Turns out they too were plagiarized from opinions. I believe this merited rejecting the article outright for plagiarism, so I emailed the lead editor and presented the indisputable proof. Severno subsequently amended the above claim that he emailed the lead editor to reflect that he presented the evidence of plagiarism in person. His senior editors were evidently less than appalled by Severno's discovery and, according to him, made efforts to cover for the then Delaware senator rather than address the matter directly. Instead of thanking me for protecting the integrity of the journal, they covered for Biden. They fixed the plagiarism by adding proper attributions and acted like the whole incident never happened. Severna went on to assert that the method of Biden's plagiarism portrayed an obvious attempt to disguise the effort, deeming his approach Mosiac plagiarism, a practice in which an author changes individual words within a larger quote to make the plagiarism more difficult to identify. This indicates what's known in law as consciousness of guilt, Severno insisted. Worse still, Biden was already known to have plagiarized before this article crossed my desk, yet was brazen enough to try it again. The White House did not immediately respond to request for comment from just the news. What is the deal with the constant cover-ups for Biden? Why are all these cover-ups for the Biden family and Joe Biden himself? Why? I mean, if 
Could you imagine if we did not have a corrupt establishment and corrupt institutions that are willing to destroy their cr- trust and credibility to protect Joe Biden? What Joe Biden would not even be here. Joe Biden would have, wouldn't even have been a senator. This guy does nothing but lie and plagiarize his entire career. And we're supposed to be worried about Donald Trump? I mean, my God, man. It is clear and obvious this guy's an idiot. Not only is he an idiot, but he's got dementia. Why the hell would anybody want to continue voting for this guy? And I don't think they do. I think there's a lot of people that see this stuff. And and this is why one of the reasons why I make the show. I want people to know about who Joe Biden is. I want people to know that it was a mistake voting for Joe Biden. All the stuff that they hid, that they covered up just long enough to get Joe Biden across the finish line. And then this is what happens when you get somebody like Joe Biden in office. A complete freaking disaster. This guy's been on vacation for more than half of his time as president. He, I mean, he left his vacation to go to Hawaii for six hours and then went back on vacation. I mean, it's just the guy is not a good guy. The family are, is not a good family. They are nothing they told you they were. Nothing. It's it's and it's just so bizarre how we have the a, a whole of government effort to cover up for Joe Biden. Why? Like, does this guy have dirt on all these institutions? It's like we're watching like a a, a corrupt police department cover for their police officers. It's like they can't help themselves. They have to look out for one of their own. Did any of these institutions go through any kind of effort to cover for Donald Trump? No. Because Donald Trump is not with them. Donald Trump is a true outsider. And when you have Republicans that are targeting Trump, when you have Democrats that are targeting Trump, isn't it safe to say that Donald Trump is a true outsider? I mean, it's, it's incredible, man. And the, the reason why I think Donald Trump's poll numbers are starting to increase is because I'm starting to see a lot of evidence of just regular Americans across this country supporting Donald Trump more and more and more. The worse things get, the better Donald Trump's poll numbers are going to get. This is why I always say it's easy for Republicans to win this election. All they have to do is point their finger at Joe Biden. And I'm so tired of Republicans saying that Donald Trump can't win. You don't have anybody else. I know we got a stacked bench. I know people think Ron DeSantis could win, maybe. But we are not in the realm of maybe. We need somebody that's going to get more votes than he did last time. And that's Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the only person that can win this election. Up against corruption, up against fraud, up against cheating, up against censorship, up against all odds. Donald Trump is the only person that is going to be able to get enough votes to outdo the cheating. And that's it. There, there, because, you know, this, I, I just don't understand the mindset of somebody saying Donald Trump can't win. What does that mean? What does that mean? You're sitting there telling me that somebody hates Donald Trump enough to go vote Democrat? Maybe. But the thing is, is Ron DeSantis isn't even going to get people off the couch to go vote. They're just not. And it's unfortunate because I liked Ron DeSantis. This is why Ron DeSantis is going to be vice president. I'm telling you, every single day that passes, I believe more and more that Ron DeSantis is going to be VP to Donald Trump. It may not look like it now. They may be attacking each other. But in the end, it's going to come down to Donald Trump picking Ron DeSantis as his VP, bringing the party together to unify and them two splitting up the battlefield in the four years Donald Trump is president. It's a no brainer. I mean, those two together would be a very, very effective duo. You would have Donald Trump taking on the foreign policies, taking on the challenges of China and Russia, the war, all of that. You would have Ron DeSantis tackling the woke issues in this country because he's good at that. Both these men have weaknesses and strengths, but their strengths are really good for this country. And both of their strengths cancel their weaknesses out. That is it. So people don't believe Ron DeSantis would be good on foreign policy, but Donald Trump is. And not only that, but it would give Ron DeSantis a chance to kind of fly under the wing of Donald Trump, learn the ways and prove to the people that he can be an effective president. 
And that way, after four years, Ron DeSantis would get elected as president for eight years. That is 12 years of conservatism, 12 years of clawing back all the progressive woke garbage that the Democrats have pushed this country in. All the woke ideology, the transgenderism, all the crap that they shoved down the American people's throat incrementally, moving this country more and more to the left. That's how they do it. They move this country to the left by increments. It's not a fast moving thing. And unfortunately, we have a Republican Party that are just too weak and feckless to take any of the challenges. They just they constantly allow the Democrats to leech off more and more ground. They do. It's like a picture. It's like picture a tug of war game. You have Democrats, you have Republicans and the rope is just super tight. It's taunt. And it's just kind of going back and forth. That little, that little rope that's tied in the middle just keeps going back and forth over the line. And then over the last 20 years, that rope tied in the middle has gone to the left more and more and more and more. And it's still pulling the Republicans with them. We have no heavy hitters. Donald Trump was the biggest heavy hitter for the Republicans and tried to pull that rope back over across to the right, but just couldn't do it. Could not do it. Because imagine Donald Trump in the back pulling on this rope and then there's a line of people behind him stabbing him in the back. You're probably not going to be very effective either. Doesn't matter who was in the back of the line pulling on that rope. Getting stabbed in the back hinders your, hinders your ability to focus all your energy on just pulling the rope towards the other side. And so this is why Donald Trump is a true outsider, the one and only true outsider. I, I, I have nothing against Ron DeSantis. The guy is, my, is the man, dude. He's my, he's my state's governor. He is, the, he is awesome. He does a great job here. And I want to see him as president. But I agree with a lot of the other critics out there that this wasn't the right time. But then you think about it. Maybe it's the perfect time. Because Ron DeSantis could be running for VP, get four years of experience as VP, and then come out on the other side a superstar. It is the only thing that is going to save Ron DeSantis' chance of ever being president is by just throwing up his hands, backing Trump, becoming VP, and then running for president after four years. That's it. That's how I feel. And I'm not the only one that thinks this. And you guys know, anybody that's listened to the show, I've been saying that it's going to be a Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis ticket since the very beginning. And I'm not the only one that is starting to talk this way. So I got some audio of Mike Gallagher that pretty much says the same thing I'm saying. Here, check this out. You know, every time I hear this guy, he checks every box for me. And there's no way around it. He is a formidable politician. Mm -hmm. He is an absolute rock-solid conservative governor with tremendous achievements in the state of Florida. And that's the, we have kind of an embarrassment of riches I will, you know, unless something crazy happens in the next six to 12 months, this is Trump's nomination to lose. He's going to be the nominee. Maybe the voters are going to reject the polling. Maybe it's not going to look like it looks right now uh, in, you know, six months from now, eight, 10 months from now. I don't know. But it's worth pointing out that the criticisms of DeSantis from, from Trump supporters are pretty bogus. He's not a George Soros puppet. He, I, I don't think he's an establ- rhino establishment guy. I think that a lot, of, a lot of people instinctively attack as a defense mechanism. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, listen, I'm just trying to be as, as brutally honest with you as I can. If if 2024 is the is a Trump DeSantis ticket, my gosh, do you realize what great shape we're going to be in mm-hmm. on every level? I, I mean, you know how I feel. DeSantis should have waited till 2028 before running for president. He didn't. He's in. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't go well for him, and so far, at least polling wise, it's not. If he if he says, I'm out, I'm on Team Trump, and President Trump picks DeSantis to be his running mate, what? Honest to gosh, what's wrong with that? Nothing. 
nothing. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen. I think, and I've been saying this from the beginning, I think what they're doing is I think Trump and DeSantis are purposely making people believe that they're not going to be running together. Think about it. When did Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis ever have any kind of beef with each other? Never, never, up until Ron DeSantis announced he was running. And then Donald Trump made up this excuse about loyalty and stuff like that, called Ron DeSantis to sanctimonious, which is one of the worst names I think I've ever heard Donald Trump come up with. Ron DeSantis has really not punched back to Donald Trump at all. Really measly stuff. I mean, they're not really damaging each other that bad. They're not. And then, of course, you have the diehard Trump supporters that are really, you know, talking about the George Soros stuff, talking about all that. And it's not damaging to a point to where they couldn't run together. You know, people are like, yeah, but some of the stuff that was said, Ron DeSantis has already announced that he wasn't going to run underneath Donald Trump. Yeah, he says that, but the thing is, is that is that how he really feels? So what I think is going to happen is they're just tricking the media because they know the media is very effective at creating narratives. And what's going to happen is they're going to wait as late as possible, as late as they can, and then Donald Trump is going to announce Ron DeSantis as his VP, which is going to... It's going to make the leftist's heads explode, and the media is not going to be able to catch up with the narrative. They're going to try, but it's not going to be enough. They're not going to have enough time to drum up the amount of hatred that they did for Donald Trump. It's just not going to be enough time. And if you think about it, it's genius because they have everybody tricked. Nobody is talking about Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump on the same ticket. Not the leftist media, not not the Republican media, nobody. And so, so far, it looks as if their plan is working. But I can't see Donald Trump picking anybody else that would be as an effective leader as Ron DeSantis. And not just that. Ron DeSantis gives the Republicans hope. Ron DeSantis has the votes of the more establishment bushy Republicans. He does. He has the Republicans that Donald Trump don't have. Donald Trump has the Republicans Ron DeSantis don't have. And so, wouldn't it just make sense to combine forces? split up the battlefield, and just conquer. Like I said, Ron DeSantis takes the woke left. Donald Trump takes the woke corporations and the foreign policies and just goes to town. I can't think of a more effective duo than Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. I'm sorry, I can't. And so if we know it, they have to know it. They have to. Ron DeSantis has been in second since day one. It's a big gap. Ron DeSantis is polling vice president numbers. Ron DeSantis is a perfect candidate for VP to get suited and booted and get ready for the, for the presidency. It's a no-brainer, and I can't think of anything better than 12 years of conservatism for this country. It would be a shock to the people on the left. A shock. Their heads would explode. So look, and then not only that, but look at who they're going against. As of right now, everyone's saying it's Joe Biden. I Listen, folks, I really find it hard to believe it's going to be Joe Biden. I can't see this guy having the ability to run another campaign. I can't, and just physically, I'm talking about just the physical part of Joe Biden. He is not there. He's getting drastically worse. People are going to start demanding cognitive tests. People are going to start demanding medication lists. And he's just not there. The guy is just not there. Every time he talks, every time he does something, every time he moves, there's some kind of gaffe or something that just reminds people that he's too old to do this. And that doesn't even get into the corruption. The mountain of evidence that is building up behind Joe Biden and his corrupt family and all the corrupt business deals that they've been doing the last 20 years is massive. It is a massive mountain of evidence. And here's some audio of Nancy Mace. And I think she may be onto something here about how to handle the impeachment of Joe Biden. Here, check this out. 
Milken. I want Hunter. I want everybody who was a witness and saw what we saw in the suspicious activity reports. That information we have to win in the court of public opinion so people can decide whether or not this guy who sold out his country for millions and millions of dollars should be president, which is why I've been saying no matter what the evidence shows, show all of it. Because the things that I have seen in the SARS reports would blow your mind, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat. And so we have to show the bank records to back that up. We need witnesses to come down. We need whistleblowers. We need all the people who know what actually happened to come before House Oversight, Judiciary and Ways and Means, because the American people deserve nothing less than the truth. And they can decide for themselves what should happen. And so she may be right. I think the most effective thing for Republicans to do is start an impeachment inquiry so that they can get the powers to to the the subpoena power to get the people they need. They got to gather every single piece of evidence that there is out there of Biden corruption, get everything. And then you have a team of people, people like Matt Taibbi, get a team of investigative reporters. And I promise you, they will be able to wrap everything up in a big red bow and present it to the American people in a way that the American people can see and understand exactly how the Biden family sold out this country and let the American people decide who they want for their president. And then it's over. Look, I know there's tribalists out there. The left are going to, the radical left are going to vote for Biden no matter what. They say it all the time, vote blue no matter who. But there is the independents in this election are going to be the ones deciding this election. And I just don't see it personally, the friends I know that are Biden voters that can see the corruption already, and they're already changing their mind. So if those independents see it, I know it's anecdotal, but I'm telling you, it's going to work in the same fashion to the rest of the independents in this country. The evidence is undeniable and make it into. Make it into something they can understand and be like, yes, that is corrupt. And there is no way I can honestly pull lever for a president that deserves to be impeached. There's no way. And then if you want to go through with impeachment, why not? But I'm with the people that start with an inquiry first. See how that goes. But it at the very least is going to give them the power they need to get the rest of the evidence. They got to get everything. I'm talking get every bank record, get every pseudonym email, every alias Joe Biden ever used with these business deals that he's caught using fake names with, get every evidence of Hunter Biden, get him in there for testimony, get everybody in there, get Shokin in there for testimony under oath, get everybody under oath, and then get investigative reporters to put the story together in something that's understandable for people. Because it is a lot of evidence, folks. It is It's confusing the people. It really is. When I talk to my Democrat colleagues that voted for Joe Biden, they say it too. It's just too complex. It's too confusing. It's too overwhelming for them to get. But one thing that they all have in common is they know there's something. They know there's some kind of corruption based off the news that they've seen so far. They are not the Jamie Raskins of the world that say, oh, there's just no evidence. They know there's evidence. They know there's corruption, but the Republicans need to wrap it up in a way that they can understand it from A to B. One giant story and send it out to the American people. I'm telling you, by the time they get all the evidence that they're going to have, they're not going to have any choice to impeach. But then people are afraid of Kamala Harris. The people do not like Kamala Harris. They've already spoken. Kamala Harris couldn't even get over 2% in her primaries. People do not want Kamala Harris. And all you have to do is just play one audio clip of this cackling fool talking about spaceships going up into the air. Which brings me to May 30th, 2020. Bob and Doug returned to the Kennedy Space Center. They suited up. They waved to their families. And they rode an elevator up nearly 20 stories. They strapped in to their seats and waited as the tanks beneath them filled with tens of thousands of gallons of fuel. And then they launched. 
Yeah, they did. <laughs> Is there any independent? And I'm talking specifically about independence. I'm not. I don't ever refer anything to the left when I'm talking about anything rational or anything that that involves reason. I'm talking about the independents. Do you think there's an independent out there that's going to watch that video and say, yeah, she'd make a great president? No. And what's funny is this clip that I got was from one of those colleagues that I'm friends with that voted for Joe Biden. This audio clip he sent me with a text message basically saying, how is it possible that this woman is our VP? Like, so he gets it. These, the independents get it. The people that just didn't like Donald Trump's posture, the people that were brainwashed by the media, and, and he's a CNN viewer. Him and his wife both watch CNN. As soon as you, you talk with these people for five minutes, you have five minutes to explain to a rational, reasonable person about what we're dealing with and what time it is as far as the propaganda, who, who are the players in the game, MSNBC and CNN. You spend five minutes with these people and explain to them what is going on, and they get it. They get it. It's just that they, they've been so used to listening to CNN and MSNBC and taking it at face value that they really believed all the stuff they were saying about Donald Trump. And so once you get these people away from that, from the Pravda media outlets, from the propaganda, once you get them out of the echo chamber, they get red-pilled or at least white-pilled. And not only that, but they have a comparison of Donald Trump and Joe Biden. These people want Donald Trump's economy. They want the country they had with Donald Trump. It's going to be up to Donald Trump to assure the independence that whatever it is that their concern is, Donald Trump needs to address that concern right up until the election. And if I was him, I would poll independents and ask them, what is your major concern with Donald Trump? Because it certainly can't be corruption because they already figured out that the Russia collusion hoax was a lie. They've already, this is the problem. From the time Joe Biden has been elected to now, people have had plenty of evidence to show that the media was lying about everything when it came to Donald Trump. Everything. And so they got an honest comparison now, a real life experiment. A country under Donald Trump's lead and a country under Joe Biden's lead. The reason why I say also that they're not going to run Joe Biden is they're not even trying. Like this guy is on vacation all the time. He goes on vacation for weeks at a time. He's at the beach. Nobody knows where he's at. Nobody knows who's running this country. This is why I say I, I think he's just living the luxurious life of a president, going on vacation, getting that first class presidential treatment. He, this is how Joe Biden wants to live out the rest of his days. He feels the guy is so arrogant. He feels as if he deserves to be president. He's like that guy in the office that doesn't do anything but gets promotions just because he's been there the longest. It's, he doesn't get promotions because he actually is better at his job. He just gets promotions because he's been there longer. That's how Joe Biden feels. Joe Biden feels like he's owed the presidency because of how long he's been submerged as a swamp creature in the swamp in Washington, D.C., the most corrupt capital in the country. And so there's certainly no doubt that we have to make a change. There's no way we can sustain another four years of what we're watching right now. Every single institution in our government has, be has become corrupted from our justice system all the way down to the National Archives. So I got another article here. National Archives goes woke, embraces leftist DEI and equity training at taxpayer expense. It's a hat tip to the Center Square staff, Casey Harper. A closer look at the federal agency that sparked former President Donald Trump's first federal indictment shows that it has embraced far left diversity, equity and inclusion policies. The little known federal agency called the National Archives and Records Administration, who thrust into the national spotlight after it tipped off the U.S. Department of Justice over Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents. On its website, the agency calls itself a nonpartisan independent group. A deep dive by the center square into its records show it has embraced ideology around gender and race and has reportedly been unwilling to hand over some records of President Joe Biden to investigators. Yeah. So you now you officially have the National Archives protecting Joe Biden. 
So if it's not some kind of editorial staffer that tries to protect the plagiarism by Joe Biden by changing words around and citing different sources that he used, but you now have the National Archives that's protecting Joe Biden too. Joe Biden has the entire government protecting him from all this corruption. Have you ever seen anything like this? I never have. Did the National Archives ever protect Donald Trump by refusing to hand over documents of, of during an investigation? How is this not obstruction? But they, they willingly handed over documents of Donald Trump. Folks, they, they are the ones that brought on the January 6th indictment. Because Donald Trump was not giving the documents they wanted, instead of suing in civil court, they filed a criminal indictment. They wanted to criminalize it. These people are sick. It's, it's all one giant conspiracy. It's not a theory. It's a conspiracy. From the weeks and months before the 2020 election, all this stuff was set in place. There is a group of people at the upper echelons of our, of our country in Washington, D.C. that are creating this massive chess game, this massive game of chess. Everything has been planned. Everything has been orchestrated. Even the false flag operation on January 6th, that was orchestrated in order for them to railroad Donald Trump supporters so that they can later indict Donald Trump for the same thing. All of it is, is planned. It's all a damn plan. I'm not saying it's by the whole government. I'm saying there is a group of people that are using the government, using the justice system and the tools of, of government institutions as a weapon against Donald Trump to prevent him from being president. That, to me, shows that they are extremely scared of Donald Trump going in there. There is no reason why they would, they would go through all this trouble to keep one man from winning the president, who was already president for four years and gave this country the best years it's seen in decades. It doesn't make sense. There's criminality involved. These people know they committed crimes, and they know Donald Trump, if he gets in there, their asses are grass. That is what we're dealing with now. This is why I say people need to be prepared for a lot more. And so it's disgusting that the National, Archi the National Archives won't release documents of Joe Biden's corruption. In its 2022 budget request, the federal agency asked Congress for more than $28 million and nearly 150 new staff to, quote, advance racial equity and support undeserved communities. This is the National Archives. A program increase of $20,052 and 144 FTE to advance racial equity and support undeserved communities, the budget said. This request includes funding to address staffing needs across the agency and funds targeted recruitment activities to ensure a diverse pool of applicants of applicants to help increase the diversity of NARA's workforce. Part of the record-keeping agency's equity spending, which has been encouraged and in some cases mandated by Biden since he took office, include a diversity, equity, and inclusion action plan. NARA's latest 2022 DEI plan pledges to double down on equity training for employees to strengthen and foster an inclusive workforce. Well, it's official, folks. We have almost, we've lost every single institution in our government to the Democrats. It's true. Our government is officially one party ruled. The Democrats own every aspect of our country. They own every aspect of our government. The FBI, the CIA, NARA, the CDC, the NIH. Just go down the list. It's every single freaking agency. Every single one is trying to protect Joe Biden and destroy Donald Trump. NARA is just the latest one. The National Archives is just the latest, the latest institution to do it. If they are injecting woke ideologies like DEI and ESG, what does that tell you? That tells you that they are leftist, woke, radical fascists. They are a part of the problem. And so the, the only way for the American people to get their country back is with Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. That is it. There's no other ticket other than that. I know people keep calling me crazy for saying it, but I'm telling you, it's going to be Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. I'm making the prediction, and every day that goes by, I feel better about my prediction. I do. Every single day that goes by. There was a football game in Iowa State that Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis and a couple other candidates went to. And of course, on X, formerly Twitter, you see a lot of the leftist Democrat fascists talking about how Donald Trump was booed. Donald Trump was not booed. 
the one guy that was booing there, literally, maybe one or two people that were booing, they increased their audio and decreased the cheers from the crowd, from the thousands of other people, so that it would appear that Donald Trump was being booed, but he wasn't. This is sick, folks. This is information warfare. They're manipulating video in order to sway the minds of the public and how people view Donald Trump. Look, a lot of people like winners. People support winners, and people also support underdogs. But most of all, people want to vote for a winner. People vote for a champion. And so the smallest minute things, like editing audio so that it sounds like the champion is being booed, that is a very effective way of swaying the minds of people. It's propaganda. It's propaganda. So you see this all throughout Twitter. Well, that's not at all what happened. And I got audio right here to show you. Donald Trump was treated amazingly at Iowa. And Ron DeSantis was there too. And there was supposedly like this thing that Casey DeSantis did. They flew missing flyers all over the place as like a campaign tactic. And it said missing uh, Melania Trump. So I guess none of us have seen Melania Trump in Donald Trump's uh, uh, in the Trump campaign very much. She's kind of just been off the radar. She's never been in the spotlight for the first lady. I think, honestly, I think Casey DeSantis wants Ron DeSantis to be president more than Ron DeSantis. I think I think we can all agree that Casey DeSantis has pushed Ron to do this. I, I, I mean, I can't see any other I don't see any other way around it. She's campaigning harder than Ron DeSantis is. And what is it about what is it about wives that want their husbands to be these governors or presidents? Look at Jill Biden. Jill Biden is awful. A shame on that woman. And the only reason why she did it is because she wants to be treated like a queen. She feels like she deserves it. She's stuck in with this idiot for so many years. Now she's finally starting to recoup her losses. It's finally coming to fruition. She feels like she deserves to be first lady of this country. And look, you know, I don't blame her. That, having to put up with Joe Biden for as long as she has. But still, it's disgusting behavior from these people. These are bad human beings. The Biden family are bad human beings. I do not get that from the DeSantis family. No. I think Casey DeSantis is just, she feels like Ron DeSantis has a shot, and so she's going to try. But it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But I think she would be perfectly fine with my plan, I think she'd be perfectly fine being the vice president's first lady. I think she'd be perfectly fine with Ron DeSantis being vice president and then going in for the campaign for president after four years. I mean, it's perfect, folks. Everything lines up perfectly. There is no reason why you wouldn't pick Ron DeSantis as your VP. That's what I'm saying. I don't see anybody else being VP other than Ron DeSantis. If Donald Trump picks a running mate other than Ron DeSantis, it would be a bad move. It would be a mistake, I think. It would. I don't care about all the, the chingasos that have been thrown around, you know, people tagging each other about Ron DeSantis, people tagging each other about Donald Trump. In the end, they'll come together, and so will the Republican Party. And everybody knows it. Everybody hates the fact that Donald Trump bashes Ron DeSantis. And everybody hates it when Ron DeSantis bashes Donald Trump. But what happens if they came together? It would be insane. And if you think about it, look at what Kamala Harris did to Joe Biden. She openly called the guy a racist on the debate stage. And there she is as VP, even though she specifically got picked because of the color of her skin, which is racist, but I digress. That's a common, that's a commonality these days, is, is people focusing on skin color so much, judging people off your skin color, literally. That's, I mean, you're literally judging people off your skin color. If you pick Kamala Harris, not because of her attributes, not because of her merit, but because of the color of her skin, that to me is racist. That, that is focusing purely on somebody's skin color, the melanin component in their skin over merit or attributes or positive attributes. It's, it's, that's racism to me. And so I am on the Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis boat. And I'm not the only one. I'm starting to see a lot more signs, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump signs. I don't know where these people are getting them signs, but it's clear that, that other people want to see it too. And it's unfortunate that we have agencies like NARA, the National Archives, blocking 
the investigators from getting documents about Joe Biden. They're not going to be able to hide this forever, folks. This is they've only been they've been working on this for eight months. They're not going to be able to hide this forever. Granted, I feel like Republicans could could be moving faster. I feel like there's more they can do. But at the very least, by come election time, there needs to be every single piece of evidence out there for the American people to see in a manner to where everybody can understand it. And then that right there will cost Joe Biden the election. But it's just sad. This is exactly why they have to do a, an impeachment inquiry, because it's easier to get cooperation from places like the National Archives, and it's easier to get subpoenas for other, for other people. Their, their powers just increase. Their ability to issue subpoenas and the type of subpoenas they are is more powerful. And that's exactly what they should do, and I guarantee that's what's going to be happening first thing tomorrow when, um, when Congress is back in session. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen. That's all for today's show. Um, I'm going to be getting into another show right after this. I just wanted to release this today. Um, to give you something to listen to on the weekend. I'm going to be coming up with, uh, we got a lot more stuff to talk about, more specifically the, the reason why Democrats are all of a sudden supporting the Constitution and how people like David Hogg and this Democrat, um, Ted Lieu, is coming out in support of the Constitution when it came with that that New Mexico governor that essentially suspended people's Second Amendment rights in New Mexico, in Albuquerque. I mean, it's pure tyranny. It's tyranny, like through and through tyranny. I, this is why I always say we are watching the rise of tyranny in this country. We are watching the rise of fascism in this country, totalitarianism. And we have Democrats that openly support it. They don't even hide it anymore. The media doesn't even hide it anymore. I mean, it's, it's, they just come out and say it. Yes, I think free speech is dangerous, so therefore you should be censored. You have Democrats coming flat out saying, oh, I think there's a public health emergency, so I'm going to suspend people's Second Amendment rights. It's like, what? These people are nuts. They are actively coming out as fascist totalitarians. They want to be able to control everything people do. Everything. I mean, this is why Joe Biden, the Biden administration is completely lawless. I mean, this 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 administration has has I mean, they'll just straight up do something that they know is illegal, like vaccine mandates or like uh, the student debt relief or with this Alaska drilling, pulling the Alaska drilling from Enwar. I mean, all these things are illegal. All these things they know are illegal, but they do it anyways. They say they do it and then they say, see you in court. So they're openly doing things they know they're not supposed to do because they're lawless. Just like this governor that we're going to be talking about on the next show. She knows she can't do that, but she did it anyways. That is lawless. That to me is somebody that needs to be impeached. And that's certainly what we're going to be talking about on the next show. So um, so let me know what you guys think about the tr- Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis. Send me an email, Show at gmail.com. Look, I, I told you how I feel. I've been telling you for the last month or two how I feel about a Ron DeSantis Donald Trump ticket. You know where I stand. And look, if I'm right, then you know that's why you listen to the show. If I'm wrong, then hopefully you continue to listen and I'll admit I was wrong and we'll move on. But I'm telling you, it would be a grave mistake for the Trump campaign not to bring on Ron DeSantis as his VP. I'm just going to throw that out there. So yeah, let me know how you feel about the whole situation. Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. If you could share the show with your friends and family, I really appreciate that. It helps out the show. Follow the show also on Rumble and YouTube. That helps out the show a lot, especially, you know, while we're up at YouTube for now. I don't know how long it's going to last, but definitely tell your friends and family to follow the show. It really helps out the show. The bigger the show, the more the bigger voice we have as a as a family, as a team. We are all in this together, folks. This is a team. I'm trying to build an audience to where we are active and we we are up to date with the latest of what's going on to where we are informed. I am trying to build an a army of informed citizens because that is the only way we are going to have a functioning government that has oversight by the people is if you we have a army of informed citizens. People cannot push back on a massive tyrannical government if they are not sure what the government is actually up to so this is one of the main points of the show and so the more people we get on board the bigger we get the more power we're going to have and that is most definitely most definitely the main objective of this podcast 
is just having an army of informed citizens. So that's what we're trying to do. And the only way to do that is by getting it out there is by you, the audience. You guys are the only ones that are going to be able to share the show because the algorithm is not going to throw the show around. it. They're just not. So it's all up to you. Even if you think people aren't really into politics, even if it's people you don't really, you know, you, you're not really sure is into politics, get them involved in politics. I know a lot of people try to keep politics separate from their other, from their, from their life. And, you know, they try and keep it, you know, out of work, out of, out of their personal life. Don't anymore. We cannot afford that. Everybody must get involved in politics because politics involves everyone. And right now politics is the, the, the ideologies of the Democrats and their obsession, their relentless thirst to be fascist totalitarians is going to bring this country down a road you don't, we don't want to go down. And so if these people that don't want to get involved in politics don't realize that and don't start updating themselves and don't start listening to shows and listening to the latest news about what the government's doing, what these people are doing, we have to know their plans of attack. We have to know how these people think so that the people that aren't involved in politics get involved and so that we can fight back against this and get our damn country back, man. That's the goal of the show. So I would appreciate it if you shared the show with your friends and family. Let them know what I just said. You have to get involved. You ha- they have to. There's no that you cannot sit on the sidelines. There is no sitting on the fence, man. You can't. And so that the only way to do it is by just getting them involved and getting them up to date with what is going on. And that's what I'm going to do on the show. That's my main objective. And I want your main objective is to just spread the word. And that's how we're going to do this. We're going to build a massive audience with a massive army of people that are up to date and informed with what the government's up to, what this corrupt establishment is up to, so that we can finally get control back over our country. So that we can finally get our country back, man, from this, these corrupt, corrupt establishment swamp creatures that have had control of it for decades. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please tune in to the next show right after this, and I'll talk to you guys soon. So, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I want you guys to have a good day. God bless you, and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.